Well, good morning, everyone. As you probably know, details are very important. For example, if um, you're transferring some money or paying a bill, it's very important to get the period, that little dot, in the right place and to have the right number of zeros in the right side or the left side of that little dot. And so many other things in our life, details are really important. This is just as important, details are just as important when we read the Bible. Because very often, we read the Bible very quickly, we listen to a verse and we think, you know, we've heard this before, there's nothing more I need to learn. But there's often more to reading the Bible than we assume at first glance. We sometimes hear a passage and think we know it because we heard it before, and then fail to dig deep and dive into what more that passage may say. For example, today's gospel is usually entitled The Feeding of the 5,000. Why? Because that may be the most obvious part of it. Jesus does feed 5,000, but we overlook other important aspects of this gospel. As I was reading this gospel, I realized, you know what, we're kind of uh, back to step zero again. Jesus uh, was preaching and the crowd sat uh, on the grass. So come full circle, I guess. But that's not really what I wanted to focus on today, the fact that some of you are sitting on grass and we're here out, out in the open. But that's okay. Jesus did feed 5,000, and that's why this gospel is often th uh, titled The Feeding of the 5,000. Yes, Jesus did many other things, but we should always also ask in this gospel, why did Jesus feed the 5,000? The most obvious reason is they were hungry. Yes, Jesus fed the 5,000 because they were hungry. Yes, Jesus performed this miracle because the disciples told him, we have only five loaves here and two fish. Therefore, he did this miracle in response to that need. We can focus on these two elements and can focus on even a third, that this miracle prepared his disciples and was a prefiguration of the Eucharist, in that what Jesus did is what we do every Sunday. He looked up to heaven, blessed and broke, and gave, to the, gave the loaves to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the crowds. Or we may even find further details that there is a fourth element that after they all ate, they were satisfied. They took up 12 baskets full of broken pieces left over, and those who ate were about 5,000 men besides women and children. These are all great elements of the gospel, wonderful miracles, wonderful reasons. These are all important aspects of today's gospel, but these do not fully answer the question, why did Jesus feed the 5,000? Because of the nature of this amazing miracle, we quickly overlook an important verse right at the beginning of the gospel. As Jesus went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion on them. And then he healed their sick. This, for me, is a very important phrase because it shows, to, shows us that details are very important. And that not one word in the Bible was written simply to fill up space. Every aspect of it. And that's why when you pick up the Bible and read it at home, you can actually meditate and reflect for hours on maybe not even a verse, half a verse, or even a word. And this is one of those words. It's a very important phrase, and part of the phrase, that he had compassion on them. This element of compassion that is often overlooked for the more dramatic aspect of the feeding and of the number of people that were there. This is important as it helps us balance the story and focus not only on the great miracle of multiplying fish and bread, but, I think more importantly, why it happened. Yes, Jesus performed this miracle because the crowds were hungry. Yes, Jesus performed this miracle because they only had five loaves and two fish. Yes, Jesus performed this miracle to prepare us for the Eucharist. 
But prior to all these, and at the heart of today's gospel, is that Jesus had compassion then, continues to have compassion on us today, and draws us in a very special way to see the world as he does. That when we look at things and look at people, we have compassion. So this gospel, in addition to being impressive in the sense of what Jesus did, it actually goes in the direction of trying to be more impressive in what it does to us. Why is this word so important? The word compassion it means, comes from actually a Latin word, just like many important words in English, means to suffer with, to suffer with. Compassion, therefore, is not an emotion. It's not an emotion of pity or sorrow or condescension. True compassion means that we suffer with the one who is suffering. So the fact that we see someone and we have certain emotions, positive or negative, that's not compassion. Sometimes we know people who have had difficult lives or we see people who live on the streets and we pity them. Sometimes we do something even worse. We blame them for their misery. This is not compassion. Compassion is a grace. It's a movement, moving, movement of the heart that goes beyond the initial impression. It is a grace to feel the pain, to suffer with, to feel pain with the one who is in pain and to feel the suffering of the one who is suffering. This is a grace because when we feel authentic compassion, we also feel the urgency to help the other out of their suffering. So if you notice this pattern, Jesus looks, Jesus sees, Jesus suffers with, he puts himself at the level of those who are feeling whatever it is they are feeling. He doesn't look at them and doesn't look at us at a distance. The word compassion is a crucial word not only to understand this parable, the life of Jesus, the Gospels in general, and our faith, but it's also crucial to understand how Jesus fit in to the, his role as the one who fulfilled the prophecies of the Old Testament of the Messiah. You might think that this fulfillment, if we were to prophesy the fulfillment of the Messiah, if we hadn't read the Old Testament, it would be something like the fulfillment of the coming of a king. And all the positive attributes would have been attributed to him. But that's not the role of the Messiah that was presented in the Old Testament. There are many passages there. One in particular, which you can read the full context of, is Isaiah 53. I will read only a few verses. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that made us whole. And with his stripes we are, we are healed. The Messiah, as prophesied in the Old Testament, therefore, would not only suffer, but he would suffer with. Therefore, this gospel that we read today, although we may initially see it as a great miracle story and a very impressive one, it leads us to something much deeper into the identity of Jesus, who he was. Not as the miracle maker alone, but as the one who prior to doing the, any miracle, suffered with, put himself at the level of those who he was ministering to in order to lift them up. Therefore, we read what, when we read in today's gospel that Jesus had compassion on them, what does this tell us? It doesn't tell us that he pitied them, but that he was showing that he is the Messiah who is willing to put himself at our level to suffer with them and to suffer with us. Think of a little more details. If you were there, 
And of course, Jesus would have been the most powerful, most impressive figure there. As everyone else was hungry, he was not sitting alone with a leg of lamb. He was suffering with them. Then when, she, when Jesus performed the miracle, it was then that he ate with them. Jesus therefore suffers with the crowds. Why? In order to fully rejoice with them. Jesus felt their suffering, not to pity them, but in order to relieve them. This is an important element in our life as well. When we think of whatever it is we feel we are going through, Jesus is looking at us with compassion. Jesus first suffers with us in order to remind us that he is with us. He suffers with us to feel our pain, and then and when he elevates us through it, he celebrates with us as we are celebrating. That is why it is important for us to read the Bible slowly and carefully. Pick up a good Bible, a good Catholic study Bible, and look at the notes. Stop at the words, at the phrases, at the verses, and realize that there is much more than what we may pick up intuitively upon first reading it. That Jesus shows compassion throughout his life is an important element for all of us to focus on ourselves. This also helps us understand that Jesus, throughout his life, was not only a miracle worker, he was not only a wise teacher, but that at the heart of his ministry, he fulfilled the prophecies of the Old Testament as the one who suffers with and who is today as the risen and glorified Lord, the one who continues to suffer with all of creation in order to elevate creation. Jesus had compassion because he was ready to suffer during his life, and this helps us understand our relationship with him. St. Paul tells us in his letter to the Philippians, Jesus humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even death on a cross. Therefore God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every other name. It is within this larger context that we need to understand the life of Jesus and particularly today's gospel. When we first hear this reading, we might think the greatest miracle is that Jesus fed 5,000. But when we look at this gospel a little deeper, we realize that the greater miracle is that God loved us so much that he was willing to be with us, to walk with us, and even go further, he was willing to suffer for us and with us. This is how Jesus shows us his compassion and how we understand also his final days of suffering on the cross. That was not an accident. He wasn't tricked into the cross, forced into the cross, or captured into the cross. It was a revelation of his true identity of the one who suffers with and suffers for. In doing this, Jesus invites us also to look at our own suffering with relation to how God suffers with us, but also to look at the suffering of others. How do we look at the suffering of others? Ask yourself, regardless of how you may do it. You may do it in a positive way or a negative way. But God invites us today to look at the suffering of others with the same eyes that he looks upon us, not with pity, but with true compassion to suffer with in order to be with and help with, just as Jesus does. Whose suffering, therefore, we can ask ourselves today, have you noticed? Whose suffering are you joining yourself with? And whose suffering have you relieved? This is the kind of compassion that Jesus shows us and wants us to practice daily in our lives, and in so doing, we end up discovering the true miracle that is amazing that is presented in today's gospel. Amen.